Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Diamond Multimedia Amp 1000 Android Media Player. It's uh, basically like if you took a tablet or a smartphone and stuck it in front of a TV, this is what you would get. So it has a 1 GHz AmLogic processor. It's an ARM Cortex A9 processor, which is reasonably fast. It's a single core chip. It's got 512 megs of uh, memory and 4 gigs of internal storage. But you can see that you can also plug in external storage using the two USB ports or the SD card slot. There's on the front, we've got a uh, status LEDs and a power button. On the side, we've got vents. And on the back, some more connectivity options, including the HDMI and audio to connect a television or other display. Some audio jacks, wireless antenna, and Ethernet. So all you got to do is hook it up to a TV, and you can run Android applications on your TV. And here you can see that we're running Android 2.3. Uh, theoretically, it should also be capable of running Android 4.0 and other operating systems. And here's how you control it. There's a remote control that comes with the device. It's an RF remote, which means that it's using radio frequencies to communicate with the uh, box, and you don't have to point it directly at the box. And there's sort of an air remote. Uh, or air remote mouse kind of thing going on here, where as I move it, you can see that the mouse cursor is moving on the screen. So that's basically how you navigate, but then you've also got a QWERTY keyboard for use with uh, thumb typing, some shortcuts here for home, menu, and back, and so forth. Um, the keyboard's a little bit quirky in that you've got like this big green button here, or arrow that looks like you would hit it to go back, but you actually hit the escape button to go back. There's not actually a button where that green area is. Um, F3 counts as notifications, but it doesn't say notifications. There's no icon on it. So it takes a little getting used to the remote control, but once you do, it, uh, it's uh, not a bad way to interact with Android on a TV. So unlike Google TV, which is really designed to be used with a standard media center remote control, this is the stock Android that you would get on a uh, phone or a tablet. So you do need to sort of have some of these controls that you would normally have on a computer uh, type device. Um, you can also use these arrow buttons to navigate to some degree. So for instance, if we go to the list of applications, you can use the arrow buttons to go up and down with a little bit more precision, perhaps. So let's take a look at some of the things you can do here. We can open a web browser. And navigate through websites reasonably well. And you can use Android type gestures like scrolling and so forth here. And go back to the home area. Uh, you can load up media applications such as YouTube or Netflix. And so, for instance, let's uh, go ahead and just start watching a video here on Netflix for a second. Now, what I've noticed on Netflix is that it doesn't do high-definition streaming. So you can watch videos, but they're not necessarily going to look as sharp as they might on some other devices. Um, this is particularly not sharp at the moment. And that is my cat hissing at another cat. Sometimes you have to start a video twice before it gets um, less blocky. So this looks better, but you can see, well, I don't know how well you can see, because this video is only 720p, but essentially I think what we're watching here is a 480p version of the video. Now video quality for uh, H.264 videos and uh, MPEG-4 videos is much, much higher. So if you have videos that you put on a USB flash drive or a hard drive or other storage, that works really well. Or I went ahead and installed ES File Explorer, which makes it pretty easy to connect to shared network drives. And I've got a computer that I use as a DVR, recording all sorts of programs. And so for instance, well, unfortunately I can't remember exactly which ones of these are MPEG four and which ones are divx 
Most of them are actually DivX because I recorded them a while ago before I had made the switch to MPEG-4. There we go. So a recent episode of Grimm. It's going to go ahead and open it up in the default movie player. And this is 720p video recording. Oh, and you've made some work here. Tell us again who you're playing for. The quality is pretty good. Uh, the Pat Tillman Foundation. Speed of what we're doing. So it can take a little while sometimes to buffer a video. But once it gets going, the video quality is pretty good. Now there's also media control buttons on the um, remote control right here. So I can hit play, pause, fast forward, rewind. Those don't work in all applications. They do work in the default media player. So let's go ahead and go back. And now I'm going to start a video that is recorded in DivX. Um, out of the box, this doesn't work with the default media player, but I downloaded MX Player and it plays pretty well. It just takes a little bit longer to load. Fitness challenge for but you can see the video quality is actually quite good. The cost is twenty five dollars per person. Families of four can register. And you said, "Have a good day and be a learning." Now this time, working on your case well, this time it is working, but the minute you're heading downtown and fast forward and rewind buttons and, wind up becoming uh, zoom buttons instead of fast forward and rewind. So, you know, the controls aren't necessarily super consistent and they're not really that well placed if you're used to holding a remote control like this and you have to sort of go up here and you can't really feel which button is which. So, you know, the user interface uh, of the remote control could be a little bit better, but for the most part, anything that you would want to do on an Android device you can do. You can run Facebook, you can run games, um, you can view your calendar, you can run all of these different applications and it works pretty well. You should also be able to plug in a USB keyboard and mouse if you really wanted to. Um, now one thing that I did try is I tried installing the um, we can go to TuneIn Radio here for instance, we can listen to you know we can stream online radio stations. Um, anyways, one thing that I did try to do was install the XBMC Media Center application, which uh, sort of turns an Android device or Linux or a Mac or a Windows device into a media-centric computer uh, with a media-centric user interface. Uh, it didn't want to work at the moment, but that's still pre-release software, so it's not really that surprising that it didn't work. But there are a number of other applications that do work just fine here, including Pandora, Netflix, TuneIn, as I mentioned, and it uh, this comes with some other video players preloaded, including ESPN, uh, this video player application, some radio applications, and so forth. So, um, you know, is it worth the hundred, hundred twenty dollars uh, price tag? Eh, you know, that's that's sort of difficult to say um, when you can pick up a Google TV box from Vizio for just ninety nine dollars, or you can pick up something cheaper like an MK eight zero two Android four point mini PC for fifty, sixty, seventy dollars these days. Um, but the nice thing about this is really that it does come with this remote control. It gives you access to pretty much any application that will run on Android 2.3 Gingerbread and um, you know I just got this uh, recently and just started playing around with it. My, uh, my guess is there's a lot more that this device can do as well. Um, the Android interface clearly not really designed for use on a TV but this remote control makes it a lot easier to use. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a first look at the Android or at the Android media player AMP 1000 from Diamond Multimedia. You can find more details at Lilliputing.com.